today on Cruise Man's Garage, we are going to transform this 2016 Honda Goldwing with a rear-end LED upgrade kit from Pathfinder LED. So let's pull the bike into Cruise Man's Garage and get started. Before we get started, let's take a look at what comes in this rear LED upgrade kit from Pathfinder LED. This kit is for the 2001 to 2017 Honda GL1800. It comes with six ultra flash LEDs. These are the red LEDs that will replace your brake and tail lights. It also comes with two amber turn signal LEDs. And this particular kit comes with the optional license plate LED and an LED flasher. If you do not have an LED flasher on your Goldwing, you will need to replace your OEM flasher with the LED flasher for it to work correctly. What really makes this kit special are the ultra flash LEDs that replace your existing brake lights. These will increase your visibility to drivers behind you because they flash four times, then turn solid red whenever you apply the brakes. The additional attention they draw may actually prevent a rear end collision. The LEDs feature plug and play installation. The modulators are actually built into the LEDs, so there's no separate modulator to install. These LEDs are available in a complete package or in pairs. Now these are high quality LEDs, not some junk that you might get on Amazon or eBay. These are the real deal and they come with a full five year warranty. For your LEDs to flash properly, you need to install an LED flasher if you haven't done so already. Here are the tools required for this job. If you already have an LED flasher installed, you can skip this section of the video by going to the time code below. Now if you own an airbag model Goldwing, we don't recommend installing this product you should have a qualified Honda service tech install the LED flasher for you. You'll notice there are two different connectors on the LED flasher. One is a male connector and that's for the 2001 to 2005 model Goldwings. The other is a female connector and that is used on a 2006 to 2017 model. Let's start by putting the bike on the center stand. The flasher module is rather inconveniently located underneath a frame member on the front of the bike, so we're going to have to remove a few parts to get access to it. Raise the windshield adjustment levers on both sides of the motorcycle. Release the rubber boot around the rear view mirror as shown here. Then carefully press the mirror forward. It's on a hinge and it will tilt forward and out of the way. This will give you access to a 10 millimeter bolt on each side of the motorcycle that need to be removed. Now, before I remove this bolt, I'm going to advise that you stuff a microfiber cloth or some sort of cloth down into this opening. Just in case you drop that bolt, you don't want it to fall down into the bowels of the top shelter. It's just kind of a precaution I always use. Now, you can use a 10 millimeter open end wrench. Uh, to get access to this bolt. I have one that has a little a ratchet mechanism on one end and I find it's a little bit easier to use. And go ahead and loosen this bolt and then once it's kind of loose you just want to use your fingers uh, to get it the rest of the way out. I usually use both fingers on both hands, my forefingers, just so I make sure I've got a hold of it. It's important to go slow and just make sure you don't drop this. And there's also a big washer that will come off with it, as you can see here. Now the bolt is out. You see there's not a lot of threads on that bolt, so it doesn't take long to get it to come out. Now once you've removed that bolt on both sides of the motorcycle, you then want to release these tabs on this uh, rubber boot that hold it to the front windshield garnish. There's also a little plug at the bottom that holds it to the top shelter. I'm going to go ahead and remove it just because I think it gets it out of the way better. Next, we want to remove this rubber washer 
that uh, is underneath that bolt we just removed, go ahead and remove that rubber washer so that it doesn't accidentally fall off and just set that off to the side. We'll reinstall it later. Now what we want to do is we want to lift this colored plastic piece up over that pin. We want to get it to kind of pull out on it toward the outside and lift it up just like that. So this will help to release this front garnish. You want to do this again on both sides of the motorcycle. Once you have the plastic tabs on each side over those posts, you can now begin to remove the front windshield garnish. You'll notice a couple of rubber grommets, one on each side, uh, that kind of hold this into place. And there are two more grommets down at the very front, kind of in between the headlights. And if you just pull it straight out, it will come off. Here you can see those plastic bosses that fit into those rubber grommets. And now we can look at the front of the motorcycle and you can see those two rubber grommets that those plastic bosses fit into. Painted parts should always be set off to the side away from your workplace on a soft surface. I'm putting mine on a carpeted area. You can use a Phillips screwdriver or a JIS screwdriver to remove the single screw that holds this little plastic guard in place. Once you do, set it off to the side. Next, we need to remove this windshield tension bracket. This is held in place with two 10 millimeter nuts and one 8 millimeter bolt. I'm using a 10 millimeter socket to remove the 10 millimeter nut on each side of this bracket. Here I'm removing the one on the left side, but then I'll move over and remove the one on the right side. Now I'm removing the little bolt at the front with an 8 millimeter socket. With the bolt and the two nuts removed, you can now lift the tensioner off of the windshield and set it off to the side. Next, we need to remove the windshield. The windshield is held in place with one flathead or Phillips screw on each side of the windshield and two 5 millimeter socket bolts at the very front of the windshield. I'm going to start by removing the two 5 millimeter socket bolts using a 5 millimeter Allen wrench. These are both the same size and same style, so you don't have to worry about getting them mixed up. You can use a Phillips head or a flathead screwdriver to remove these screws on the edges. And be careful, there is a small nylon washer that comes off with each of these screws, so make sure you don't lose those little nylon washers. Now it's very important when you're removing the last screw, there's nothing left holding the windshield in place. So you want to make sure you keep some pressure. I'm using the, my left forearm here up against the windshield because once I remove that screw, the windshield could just fall off and you don't want it to get damaged. So either hold some pressure with one hand or in my case, I'm using my forearm. If you have a helper, you could have them hold it. And then once that screw is out, the windshield just comes right off. And of course, you want to set it off to the side where it won't get damaged. If these little metal holders come out, no problem, you just stick them back in place. To gain access to the flasher, we need to move this meter panel up out of the way just a little bit. We don't have to remove it, but we do need to get it out of the way. There's a single Phillips screw kind of in front of the rear view mirror, and we need to remove this using a Phillips or JIS screwdriver. This meter visor panel is secured with eight 5 millimeter socket bolts shown here. There's also two Phillips screws or JIS screws on each side. And there are two small push pin body clips at the very bottom front. I'm using a 5 millimeter Allen wrench to remove these socket bolts. All but two of them are identical, and I'll point that out to you here in a little bit. And I'm going to speed up certain parts of this video so that you don't have to just watch me unscrew a bunch of bolts. Of course, you are also able to use a 5 millimeter uh, Allen socket to do the same thing. You don't have to use an Allen wrench. And some of these are on pretty tight, uh, as you can hear. It's probably the first time they've been removed from... Uh, since the bike came in from the factory, so they can be really tight the first time you remove these. You should notice the bolt on 
the far right and far left bolt on each side at the bottom have a longer shoulder than the other bolts. I'll show you these in another picture. Next, we can use a JIS or Phillips screwdriver to remove the four screws uh, that are kind of on the edges of this meter visor panel. All four of these screws are the same size, so you don't have to worry about getting them mixed up. Now you simply grab and pull up on these little body clips or little rivets and they just come right out. Now I'm going to be replacing the flasher using the front method. I'm just going to go in from the front of the bike because I have pretty small hands and fingers and I can get access this way much easier than going in from the rear. However, if you have larger hands, uh, you might not be able to do it from the front. You may have to go in from the back, and there is another technique for doing that. I'll put a link in the description below to a video by Chris Caliente that shows how he did that, and uh, that can show you how to use that method as well if you choose to do that. Okay, we just need to move this kind of this panel up and out of the way just so we can get underneath. You don't want to pull too hard on this. You could break something or release a tab that you don't mean to. We're just getting this up far enough so that we can get under here and get to our flasher, which is kind of up underneath there. So I'm just going to take a rag or a couple of rags. I'm just going to kind of stuff them up under there just to hold this up out of the way. Just to kind of keep some pressure on it, keep it up and out of our way. So we can get back up in here and get that flasher out. There's really no easy way to do this. Here I'm using the light on my cell phone just to kind of see my way around. And you might even need a little LED flashlight. Uh, I'm going to get up in here with my cell phone camera and show you where this flasher is. It's actually on the back side of a frame member. It's right there. That is the flasher. You can see it there. And it basically is on a little metal stay. You'll have to lift it up straight up and it will come off that stay. And then there's a plug in the back and we have to unplug it to remove the flasher from the motorcycle. And so a lot of this you're doing by feel. So it's a little difficult. Like I said before, if you have small hands and small fingers, it really helps a lot. Now getting the old flasher disconnected from the plug that goes to the motorcycle is the hardest part. It probably took me about 10 or 12 minutes uh, to fiddling around with this thing to get it in there. And you have to kind of get up under there and look and see what you're doing. I ended up using a pair of hemostats to kind of clamp down on the wire that goes into that plug just because I didn't want it to accidentally fall down into the shelter so I couldn't find it. So a pair of hemostats can help if you're doing this method. Now with the flasher removed, I can show you the little tab that you have to kind of press down on to release the plug and you just kind of pull it straight out. The plug connected to the motorcycle is going to look similar to this. The bottom one is what it's going to look like on a 2006 to 2017 model. And the top one is what it will look like on a 2001 to 2006 model. Since we're working on a 2016 model, this is the plug we'll be using. You can leave the other plug connected and just let it hang there. It's not going to hurt anything. And that's the one you would use if you're on the earlier model Goldwing. So here's a picture from my 2012 Goldwing where the LED flasher is now plugged into the motorcycle's harness underneath that frame member. Now it's just a matter of tucking that LED flasher back onto that stay. To access the trunk lights, open the trunk and look back toward the rear of the trunk from the inside. The brake tail light combination is held in place with three 8mm acorn nuts on each side of the motorcycle. I'm going to use an 8mm socket with a nut driver to remove these acorn nuts. Now the one on the far outside is pretty deeply recessed and sometimes it just kind of stays in that recess. You can use a magnet to get it out. Uh, I was able to just leave it in that recess and then reconnect it with no problem.
Once you have those three nuts removed, you can just grab this tail light lens assembly and pull it out from the body. Now, it's still connected with wires. You have two bulbs on the bottom, and to remove these bulbs, you simply give them a quarter of a turn to the left, and they'll come right out. They just pull straight out. And once you remove the second bulb, you can just set that tail light lens assembly in the trunk for now or on the ground or wherever. You can remove the stock bulbs by just grabbing them firmly and pulling straight out and they will come out. They may be a little tight, especially if they've never been removed before, but they just press right into place and you just give them a firm tug and the bulb will come out. And your new Ultra Flash LEDs install the same way. You just push them right into the slot where the old bulbs are removed. Here you can see I've got both of the LEDs installed and I'm giving them a quick test. Always a good idea to test your lights before you put everything back together. Now it's just a matter of inserting those uh, LEDs right back into the taillight housing. Uh, press them in, give them a little quarter turn to the right to lock them in place. And that's it for each fixture. You're going to do this exact same thing on the right hand side of the motorcycle and you'll have all of your bulbs replaced with these LEDs. The only thing to remember is make sure you use the red colored ultra flash LEDs and not the amber LEDs when you're replacing these. The other four bulbs will require that we remove the turn signal assembly shown here. To do this, open your saddlebag doors and if you look at the top back of the saddlebag, you will see two 10 millimeter acorn nuts. There are two of these on each side and that's what holds the turn signal assembly in place. I'm just using a 10 millimeter socket using that same nut driver to remove these 10 millimeter acorn nuts. For this video, I'm only showing you removing the ones on the right hand side of the motorcycle, but they're identical on the left hand side. And once you have all four of those acorn nuts removed, you can now grab this turn signal assembly and pull it away from the body. Now you want to be careful if you let this thing hang that you don't allow those screws to scratch the paint because they can be very sharp. Okay, on the back of this fixture, we have a turn signal. Turn signals are on the outside of the fixture. So we have one on each side. We have one here. We have two running lights or brake lights here and here. And then we also have another turn signal here. Now I'm gonna disconnect this entire fixture just because I don't wanna run the risk of these screws scratching the paint. The way we're going to do that is just by pressing down on this tab and then pulling it and that will release. These come out a little bit differently. We're just going to press this tab and pull and that will unscrew or un I'm sorry, unplug the turn signal. Now we can turn this, that one quarter turn and release the turn signal bulb. And once we do that, we're just going to replace it like we did before. Make sure you're replacing it with one of the yellow turn signals from Pathfinder LED, like this. And we're going to put it back in. It'll only go in one way. So like that. And we're going to turn it. Quarter of a turn. Now it's locked in. And we're going to reconnect. Now you probably don't even have to disconnect that connector. I just did it because I showed you it's pretty easy to do. Over here, I'm going to replace these two brake lights. I'm going to try to do this without disconnecting the electrical connector. I'm just going to turn it, quarter of a turn, and it will come out. As you can see, you don't have to disconnect it from the electrical. So I'm going to pull that out, use one of our red running light, brake light bulbs, and put that back in. Like that. Okay, now it's in. I'm going to replace the other brake light and the other turn signal on the left side. Then we'll be done. I'll put the turn signal unit back in the bike and we'll be ready to test it. Okay, we're going to plug this back into the main harness here. Actually, I'm just going to slip it back up here for now because it's very easy to take in and out. Let's just leave it like that for now. 
Before resecuring the turn signal assembly, I want to test everything to make sure all of these new LEDs work properly. The running lights work, the right turn signal works perfectly, and now let's test the left turn signal. Good news, everything works. Now let's just secure everything back the way it was. Now it's just a matter of reinstalling and tightening those 10 millimeter acorn nuts on both sides inside the saddlebags and we're done with the turn signal assembly. My kit came with the optional license plate LED light so I'm going to show you how easy it is to replace that. There are two screws that hold the license plate bulb into place and we're going to remove the old bulb and replace it with the LED. So let's just use a Phillips or JIS screwdriver to remove those two screws. With the screws removed, you can simply pull the lens away from the rear fender. Here you can see the stock bulb and you just simply grab it with your fingers and pull it straight out and it will come out. Now just insert the LED the way the bulb came out and this is what it will look like once it's installed. Let's turn on the bike and give it a test. Wow, looks great, super bright, I love it. Now just reinsert the lens assembly with the clear lens facing down and replace those two Phillips screws and the job is done. Now when you come to a stop, the people behind you are really going to notice you with those flashing, super bright, ultra flash LEDs. And the turn signals are bright too. All of these lights are much brighter than your OEM stock bulbs and they draw less power because they're LEDs. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to click the subscribe button and that little bell icon so YouTube will notify you of new videos when they become available.